everyone, this is Mike Check 95 with another Mike Check Productions Mike Check Movie Review. If you happen to enjoy this review at all or any of our other content, be sure to subscribe to the channel, like of our videos, share with your friends, do the usual stuff. We, we love the support. I am with my usual cohorts. Krieger Marzi 1. And? Orphan Joker. What's the movie we watched today, Joker? Morbius. Morbius? Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> shout out to spoilers. We will probably talk about. So, what are the numbers, Krieger? So, um, this is a new film that just came out, but it's been out in theaters for at least what was a week. It'll now? be it'll be a week. One day. A week as of this recording. So far, international box office, which is about half and half between domestic and, and international, they're, they're sitting at eighty six million dollars. Um, their budget is seventy five million dollars. So they have only netted eleven million, which is the lowest netting of any Marvel movie that's came out in this phase. Any this phase or the last phase? It's not even been a week. Oof. Yep. So um, critics rate this movie a one point six. Fuck. Um, but as critics like to do, uh, it seems with this and Venom, they just tear it apart. Yeah. Um, audience is rating this at a seven point zero. Interesting. What's the story about Mike? So the synopsis that I decided to pull out of my brain, uh, what I got out of this film was Dr. Michael Morbius has an incur incurable blood disease that is fatal if not treated. He finds a cure mixing with human and vampire DNA, but it grants him vampiric bat-like powers and he struggles between the balance of his human and animalistic sides. That's pretty much what I got out. Just the generalization of the story of here. I'll, I'll start with the things I like first. I enjoyed the blooding later in the movie. That was good that not everybody would catch. Or not everybody would catch that, but it was one of those things like, well, what's going on? Why is she awake? That's not cool. Um, I kind of like that concept, and I'm sure in the comics that's a very obvious thing. But this is a weird vampire one because it kind of drifts halfway through other lore in this lore. Like the sun thing is usually a big issue, and they actually poke fun of, the, of that. The what do you mean by the blooding? Sorry, that means uh, Like whenever he. So before. What was the girlfriend's name again? Martine. Martine. Before he fed on her or whatever, she bit his lip, and then he bled into her. Oh, and so she swallowed that. Blood. So she, he blooded her, and that's why she she survived and she became part. part so of that's him. part of like vampiric movie lore. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Usually, one of two things happen in that situation where it was at. Usually, it'd be either he bloods her and she survives, or certain vampire. Lore has it where if you you consume somebody that you like you love a part of their essence flows through you so like you you'll have their memories and stuff like that don't know if that's a thing in this universe but that's a common thing that happens throughout so I don't know if they're gonna call it blooding but that's pretty that's pretty much blooding up to this point it's pretty scientific and it's still scientific but it's not like the regular bullshit where they're missing something in their blood and they can't be in the sunlight um, the cast was very good in this film. I enjoyed all of the cast except for Le you know Jared Leto because he can't act. No, <laughs> joking. I like to talk shit on Leto. I liked that the, the ending was not very happy. It was kind of a sol solemn one, um, and I feel like the pacing was very good um, throughout this film. This wasn't a film that I thought that I was like, oh, this is taking forever to get through, or this is not going quick enough. Um, I felt like it was well paced. Um, I didn't feel bored, bored at any point during this movie. My negatives for this film is the cop's logic pissed me off at some points. So, I mean, as Tyrese keeps them. It's true, but they're FBI agents at this point. Some of the things that kind of unrealistically didn't make sense to me is, number one, they said, okay, we need to keep an eye on the girlfriend. Let's not keep an eye on the girlfriend at all. Also, police are killed. You know what happens when police get killed, especially in what's supposed to be New York, New York City? Uh, there, there's going to be a massive manhunt, everyone's on high alert, and they're going to be really searching. So all these people can't even be out on the street kind of thing, and everyone's pretty much walking around like there's no big deal. At most, sometimes, Morbius will put a hood up, and that's about it. Also, the the people that had that underground operation that they took, took over the lab from, they didn't talk to anybody at all. There's no repercussions. They didn't go to, even go to the cops, even. There's nothing that was remotely weird where they're like, oh, fuck, they just all shut up, pretended like that never happened, and everything's good. That kind of made me angry. Bad guys don't snitch. That's true, but that's a possibility that could have happened. Mm -hmm. um, or like when the guy went to the hospital. They're like, hey, how did all your hands break? Oh, you know, it was, uh, or your fingers. It was, you know, I just tripped in the shower. 
Okay, so this is something that we could have an open discussion about. When he went to the ship to be in international waters, so uh, so that he wouldn't they wouldn't get in trouble for that. Um, why did he? Why did they hire half a dozen merc mercenaries? Yeah, that's one of the things on mine too. Is like it the bad, bad guys in the boat acted very peculiar, like and gun happy. It never specifically says who hired them, but we can figure, we can deduce it's probably uh, his his friend uh, Milo. Yeah. But if Milo... Because he's the main funder. Yeah, but if Milo sent mercenaries there to kill him, like, how did they know what was going to go bad? I if their, their plan was to kill him, then why would Milo try to be buddy-buddy friends I don't think that's with what, Morbius, I don't think that was the original plan. I don't think that was the goal at all. Um, so and I'll why would they try to kill him, and what would be their first response? So Milo's funding this, and he's pretty much given an open check to Morbius to figure to get shit right. So I think it was literally they were just supposed to be protection detail there. There was no oh I'm a bad easy person. gun for hire. Then why did they immediately go in and then try to shoot him? Because Instead of saying, hey, Dr. Morbius, are you okay? He, did you see, he jumped on the ceiling hanging upside down like he was fucking possessed. Okay, well, that's the first chance is, is not to run in and just shoot. The, they're mercenaries. They see something that looks scary, they're going to shoot. And if it's, if it's, it's better people. If it's tied into the Venomverse, as they're saying, then it's, I mean, it would make sense for them to freak out like that because it's like maybe these guys have heard or seen some shit when it comes to aliens and whatnot, so that could also explain why they're like, ah, ah! Which, it's completely unnecessary. That entire thing was just like, hey, look, here's some people for Morbius to kill. Yeah. Um, he his first blood. I, I put the fight scenes down as a negative. Um, I thought the fight scenes were kind of cool, but at the same time, I felt like I was watching an episode of Flash with Reverse Flash and Flash fighting each other, the way yeah. that graphically it looked. For a Marvel movie in 2022, I feel like that was subpar. Also, some of the fighting was hard to see. Like, it was just blurry... I kept falling through. Like, did he fall through? Did the other guy fall through? Is he jumping through now? Oh, it's all messed up. Um, rat versus human logic, I wrote that down. In their experiment, the, the, the rat died and then came back to life with a heart attack. But then when it came to the human trials, when they did that, number one, when Morbius did it, he just kind of seized for a second and then he was fine. There was no, like, I'm dead for a second. He just got right, because that it was like a 30-second conversation with the guy, and he's like, I'm walking on the ceiling now. And then, and then Milo apparently had no reaction that we could see at all. Uh, logic between him and Milo fighting. Um, at one point, Milo seemed pretty normal until he drank the blood. But even if he drank the blood, they never sat down and said like, even whenever he was like being the overprotective friend before Milo, he you know, Milo took it, he didn't say, "Hey, this has some really bad side effects. Let's study it a little bit more, and then I'll give it to you." Like that way, we don't have to have some kind of blood battle. Or some shit like I want. I want to fix this, but this has super negative repercussions. And then obviously the, the other dude gets it, and and then they don't. De this it. They're supposed to be friends that worked through this huge goal through life. They get to it. There's huge side effects that they both have. You know, the other friend says, "Oh, I got it," and he's like, "Oh, you pissed me off. You took it." But instead of like thinking logically and saying, "Okay, well, you already took it. There's nothing really we can do. Let's let's work together and find a cure for this because you have all the money in the world and I'm smart." Eventually we'll find something out. We'll just have to take these blood bags that are temporarily helping us. Please stop bleeding. Like, the other guy seemed very intelligent, too, because he has a shit ton of money, and he worked really hard towards his goal, too, and he seems like he just thrown it all away because he can't handle bloodlust. The way these two characters are, that didn't make sense to me. At Because at, at first he was... They have a good story, and they're both very intelligent, and then it's just supposed to be believable that this guy's just crazy with bloodlust trying to help his friend at the same time but doing moral wounds to him, trying to kill him at the same time, like it, it doesn't. It doesn't make sense. It, it, it's pretty much like, hey guys, let's do it. Let's make a movie, and have them fight. I, that made me angry. Um, also, another negative is happy-ish ending. I know I said it was a uh, not happy ending. It was a happy-ish ending because the chick got brought, basically brought back to life and she's still alive. So I liked that, but I also didn't like that because I liked the fact that Morbius was going to be alone and it was a really shitty ending and uh, it's still fucked up. But it's, she's uh, cursed now. And she's cursed now. True that, but it's still happy because she's still around. Yeah, so maybe she goes crazy and tries to kill him. And my final bad thing about the film that I did not like was the post credit scene was bad. The first one was good because it led off to it. The, the one that was like at the very end where it just showed him in the cell. The other one, it would have been fine if that would have just been the post credit scene. But then it, it showed the other guy in the future setting up for another movie, reference, directly referencing Spider-Man super big, and it's just like, I felt like, 
that was unnecessary. They could have, like, led into the next movie with that with that scene. That seemed like we're watching a scene from the next movie already. This is a, a, a superhero movie, but it's set in the Marvel Universe, but it's also sci-fi movie, so it's got a bunch of sci-fi faux science. Uh, specifically, comics based. I don't have a lot of experience in the comics, but... I do know that Morbius' big focus is uh, a moral battle between um, what he is now and uh, like his whole fight because he he's sort of wants to, he's almost like somebody who wants to be a hero, but he's put in a situation where he doesn't have the ability to be a hero unless he is a villain at some point, and so something to touch on to the confusion. I did not like. All the confusing stuff. I didn't like the bad guys on the boat. Uh, I wrote that, that, you know, trying to kill Morbius, and then, you know, but at the same time, his buddy, we really don't know, we know that they were hired by uh, Milo, but we don't know, like, why they were so aggressive. That confused me. Also, it seemed like a really big boat for only eight people. So, I think there was more than Yeah, having people. the freight. Well, yeah, having the. There, there, well, there were seven people plus the two. So there's nine people on that boat that we saw. There was a giant freighter. That's there. a huge ship. Yeah, like, and for everybody to be gun toting dudes, who's running the ship? Also, um, logic wise, like they're so worried about protecting her medical license. They're already doing super illegal shit, anyways. Mm -hmm. Why didn't they just do it at the lab? Why'd they have to go to international waters? Yes. Uh, another thing that confused me, uh, it's it's something, and I don't know if they're touching on it, and it's I don't want to make too many connections, but in the Marvel universe, they do the, like the the somebody so smart they can make anything out of anything, lab sequence, fun putting things together out of nothing lab, such as Tony Stark building things with with nothing, or just being able to geniusly be like, oh, this fits here, this fits there. Um, Peter Parker doing the same thing. Oh, this works here, this works there. They're working with high technology. But Morbius is like, and I know they hinted at it earlier, took a little spring and he put it in a machine to place the fuse, which is fairly simple. I've seen hacks on it on the internet. You have two batteries, you miss one, put a piece of oil in there. But to create a centrifuge out of other things, and it's just like, oh, all of a sudden his computer is connected to like whatever large program he has, before she brings in the laptop or after that whole building the lab thing out of a, a photocopying thing that I, seemed a little a little much i'm gonna insert a funny because he's not here. super computer techie he's just sciencey at no point was there mechanical other than that tiny flashback and that seemed really weird i want to throw a little funny bit here i kind of am starting to think that sony and their movies have developed their own fucking wi-fi for their movies so that's why all that logic doesn't make any sense when it comes yes. to computer shit yeah and it's it's the reason i'm saying is because they've shown in the past smart people creating stuff but like i said they were they were they were able to create stuff out of what they had but morbius didn't have the appropriate equipment and so that was what was confusing to me was him being able to do that because I don't think he built the stuff in his lab. I think he bought the stuff in his lab. And so that was confusing to me, his ability to do that very fast. The other is time scale. Um, his, he says every four hours he needs the blue blood. And I know he had blue blood at certain points, but it seemed like it was several days and he only had access to like two to four bags of blue blood and one bag of red blood. And so he should have needed more blood and it didn't show him getting that. And that was kind of confusing to me, but following the time scale of how long he was doing things, was it one night, was it three nights? It, it I don't know. Um, another thing that confused me is the very, very first scene felt like it was going to be a flashback, but it wasn't. It was like opening scene, but it felt like a flashback, and that confused me why they put that there, because it felt very flashbacky, and then they do a flashback, and it's like, wait a second. The Bats thing wasn't a flashback, that was a future back flash, and it just felt weirdly placed because it's the only scene where they're not in the city and they're getting the Bats, and I feel like it could have been after the background. I liked the cinematography, I think it was good. I like dark themes, especially if it's like a villain or somebody who's struggling with uh, uh, moral decisions, just like darkness that on the screen helps you think about yourself. 
you're in the mode. Oh, they're contemplating things. Oh, it's dark. If it's light and cheery and happy, it, it doesn't feel like there's this, this problem, this, this, this going through conflict that you, that you have in dark places and in scary, spooky places. The story, I think, had a good pacing. I liked it. It felt very compelling. Um, but with the plot, I felt like there was some, not, not holes, but some stuff that felt rushed. Uh, Morbius specifically, his moral struggle. That's one of the big things that's supposed to be about Morbius is his moral struggle. And I felt like there was too much time with his friendship with his friend and not enough time with him sitting and contemplating the moral struggle. It seemed like he didn't have much time. He was responding to everything. He didn't have a lot of time to sit and think. Like every moral decision he had was just, oh, don't do it because I'm a because I'm 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 a doctor. But at no point is he sitting in and like having this time to sit and contemplate. I'm becoming a monster. Is this something I should do? And I've seen it in, in other stories where they they have that being the focus, and that's supposed to be Morbius's focus is having that time to the sit. The only scene that they really had that then was like when he just got back to the lab and he was kind of studying his like actions yeah. and everything. It was more scientific. More and less of him actually contemplating, but that's the point. It's supposed to, Morbius is supposed to shift from the science to the moral struggle, and there wasn't enough, I felt like there wasn't enough time for the moral struggle. I wish there was more focus. That was something that Krieger mentioned that I would like to hit on, is, well, it seemed like everybody was acting weird, and it didn't make any sense. Like, why is Morbius saying this instead of contemplating? He's an intelligent person. Well, his friend's an intelligent person without the money. It seems like the serum is altering their regular state, too. And that's that's it. That's uh, that's what goods and bad. Okay, so my thoughts. Um, I feel like I'm the only one that thought the pacing of this film was not good. Like I felt okay. I feel like the very the beginning scene shouldn't have been in front of the 25 years later flashback. I should have kind of flipped those around. I feel like that's what they should have done. It felt jumbled. It felt choppy to me. I could tell that they either cut a lot of stuff out. Or they reshot everything because this film was in development hell for two years. Half the reason why is because of COVID. But I guess for what they were able to put together, it was compelling enough to for me not to get up and leave. <laughs> I well, I'm not saying trying to say I hate this movie at all. Um, I thought Little did a very decent job as Morbius, and I don't understand the hate he gets. I mean, again, I'm the kind of guy that wants to give Leto a second chance as the Joker because we had very little, very few scenes with him as a Joker. That will change when we want go watch Justice League, the Snyder Cut, later in the future. I didn't think he did bad. Um, villain, obvious. It was obvious from the get-go for me. I mean, because that guy plays villains except for Doctor Who. <laughs> Um, just the storyline between the two of them felt really corny, felt really 90s, generic, cartoony kind of storyline and everything. I felt like there was a lot of cliffhangers too, especially with Martine surviving and whatnot. I kind of said, oh, she survives, and then... Oh, oh, okay. For me, I kind of felt the movie was a tad short, but I think that's because a lot cut out, a lot rushed, yada yada. Not too bad. I'm just going to say this, I'll let you talk about it, all about it. Science was all over the fucking place for me. Yes. I was just like, what the hell? CGI was actually not that bad. I liked the facial transformation they did for um, Jared Leto and everything. Um, I forget the guy's name. This is his name. That's his picture. Uh, the guy who played Doctor Who. He, I feel like he didn't need the CGI face because he already has a vampiric looking like face. Because his cheeks are already sunk in. His eyes are already sunk in. That's why I felt like he felt good for the role. That looks fine. It's just the, the, yeah, the, the way they looked when they were flitting and stuff just looked bad. Yeah, the fight scenes are also very bad too and whatnot. That's that's a downgrade I would say comparing it to the two Venom films is that the fight scenes in this one were very were all. Oh, I almost got headaches. I almost went cross-eyed in the opening credits when they were showing all the V's and the M's. I mean, oh, he noticed me. I was yeah. like, "What the fuck?" Well, there was also that weirdly placed scene that took away from the story. Oh, the fucking like the Spider-Man three rehash with uh, Milo dancing in his fucking hotel room. Yeah, because it was bright colors. <laughs> it was bright colors. It was really weird. And then the next scene, he's in a dark place. They could have just had him put his suit on in, a, in like a they were really trying to lit push room him. and then just go. It's like he's losing his his mind. Yes, I think I was about. Either that, or I just, I feel like that's what they were really trying to go for, but I think it's some people look at that. Like do funny faces the, in the mirror instead of dancing. Because he had a real Joker vibe to him later in the movie. 
Yeah, and yeah. I feel like some fans Care would probably look me. at that and think, oh yeah, that's their way of calling back to the bad dancing scene in Spider-Man 3. I mean, they could have been doing said. that. And both of you said that. Yeah. <laughs> this movie felt a little corny, like the two Venom films, but a little worse when it came to the corniness because I was just like, oh, what? Um, okay. The end credit scenes, uh... Again, very a little confusing because the because there's literally no explanation on the time jump between Adrian Toome showing up in the prison cell in the first credit scene and then him meeting up with Morbius in the second one. There isn't, there's really is no explanation on the time jump and whatnot. The only thing that I could get from it is yeah, it's a setup. It's kind of just thrown in there last minute. I feel like, but I am a little. I'll, I'll admit I'm a little excited for it because if I feel like if the rumors and the theories are true. Maybe they can finally nail it right. This might be the setup for Garfield's third Spider-Man film. It might be, but I don't know because it can't be Holland and it can't be Maguire. Also, um, if you don't know a whole lot about the story of Morbius I in the know comics, things. like like whenever what's his face popped in that jail cell, I was like, uh, are we getting Hawkman? Are we getting Batman? Yeah, this I is. Oh, I don't oh, know oh, who the fuck this yeah. is. talking about Adrian Toomes. Yeah, he's Vulture. And then they and then they said his name, and I was like, I still have no idea who the fuck this is, so I had to Google it. I also want to point out, I'm, I'm going to edit this in here, I kind of feel like, and this is just me picking my brain at it, because it's been a while since I've seen Amazing Spider-Man 2, but I remember it pretty fucking well. I feel like that's the same wingsuit that they show at the end credit scene for Amazing Spider-Man 2 in the uh, Oscorp lab. I feel like that is the same, if not very similar in the suit they had planned. Moving on to trivia. You, yeah. you had any uh, trivia for this? I have three things that I found interesting that I found. Number one, the opening ship, the ship thing that they were on um, was ship, I will butcher this pronounce it, but Muramanu. That is the director of the of the old school vampire uh, Nostra. It's he, no, but, he, right. he butchered that pronunciation, pronunciation so bad that he even fell off camera. <laughs> Nosferatu. Yeah, yeah, yeah Nosferatu. The yes. old black the, and white. The, the name of the ship is the last name of the director of that film. Um, so they're originally um, an original cut that they had put out because this was before they reorganized when they wanted the movies, the next eight movies that they wanted for their uh, thing. Is they're going to have carnage in this film uh, up here in the jail cell. Okay, so in the this is a cool little nod that I don't know, know if you guys got this or not, or, or you probably did, and it was just like it was su super simple, but I figured it's worth noting. In the final battle, Milo says, um, "This is you know this is not a curse but a gift." Green Goblin said the same thing in No Way Home. So. He did. Yep. So yeah. that was a direct reference to Spider-Man as well. Uh, any goofs? Um, yeah, th there are some scientific goofs that I saw in there, but I didn't write them down because they were pretty obvious. That's I mean, like, where... I mean, any, 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 like, scene goof. Time to go... Do -do -do -do. Science time to charge. Have fun. Uh, science time. Uh, would like to remind people that this is scientific and not science. There's a big difference. Sci scientific. It doesn't mean that I'm an expert. Um, once again, this is also sci-fi. Which means science, but not science. Science-like. Um, examples? Genetics. That's not how genetics works. I'm not going to get into it. It would take all day. I'm going to judge this based off science that they themselves put in here. First, blood transfer. Uh, so how this works. Uh, how somebody becomes a science vampire as as opposed to a regular vampire. They blend the lines. Morbus is supposed to be a science vampire, a vampire through science, not an actual vampire, such as he doesn't get burned in light, you know, he's drinking of blood, they don't really explain that too much, other than that's how the vamp that's how the vampire bats, they, they only eat blood. So this idea that if he gets those genes, he needs only blood, everything else he wouldn't get nutrients from. You see Morbius getting a, a injection. This injection is most likely in his bone marrow or his nervous system in his middle back. While Milo, chances are he didn't get it injected by somebody because he only has one, yeah, he only has one doctor and that doctor didn't know it happened. So it'd have to be an injection and the third being the girlfriend just biting him and consuming it. Those are three 
totally different things, and any normal person who's not science would know there's a difference between having something injected directly into your bone marrow, injected somewhere in your body, and then just eating it. And so the idea also being the first two having real serum, and the next one being blood? The Why that's out. important? Why that's important is there is no genetic information in red blood cells. And that's where it blends from science into the vampiric vampir lore. Which yeah. at no point does it mention that it is vampiric lore and isn't science. And so that I didn't like. That is that is anti the science that they put in the beginning and that's stupid. You never want to create a level of science and then contradict it with some sort of boo-ha-ha. Especially the spider That's why series. I didn't like it because yeah. that takes away from the the rest of the science that's happening. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, we're going to include this specific thing that's yep. a lore from something. It was probably in the source material of the comics, but, like, it, you can't just pull out bullshit like that. Yeah, it's like, logically, why would she in that situation? She was saying, like, hey, feed on me so you can beat this guy. Yeah. Why would she bite his lip so he would bleed into her to blood her? It's like, it doesn't make any sense. Spider-Man is already very scientific, it seems very sciencey, very sci-fi, but they try to make it make sense. Oh, Peter's bitten by a radioactive spider. Uh, you know, electrodes have like been electrocuted. Morbius has bat DNA in him. They try to focus on the sciencey side of stuff. You know, Kieran Goblin went crazy because of this this stuff that he he was exposed to, things like that. The straight vampire, I bite him, I get his blood, and I now become a vampire goes against all of that. Shifts straight to lore, which is not what the comics pull from. It's not the superhero aspect. It's horror movie stuff. The mouse. At no point was there ever a machine hooked up to the mouse or sensor up to the mouse to prove that the mouse actually died. He just laid down and got very sleepy. And so it's quite possible that the mouse didn't die. And so having her die and then come back to life other than the mouse dying, even though we never see it dying, there's no proof that this would bring you back to life. And, and Morbius, the trained doctor, he, at the end of that, whenever he was like talking to his thing to re like record for clarity and everything, he, he didn't mention, he didn't say he had a car failure or anything, he just said, like, it failed. It failed. I wish they would have put a little tease in that, that like showing the mouse having a reaction, the mouse didn't have a reaction. That difference. Don't want to link too many different movies. For all we know, there's a vampiric mouse running around. Yeah, I was gonna say they didn't show it being disposed of or anything. Mm -hmm. New York, there's there's three times as much rats are as people, so technically you could have just cause the end of the world if that right. rat gets out. The science fiction of of the blooding. Once the blooding happened, you would think that so. Milo and him are alphas, is what you refer to it as, and they're going to be the strongest people because they directly were infected that we way. We don't know if they're going to pull into lore, and one of the reasons yeah. being, they specifically like, I'm not that kind of vampire, I'm a different vampire, I'm a science vampire. Yeah. Well, the blooding so, itself, the way it works, is traditionally, if the vampire or blooded is always stronger, these are more like half vampires for a long time, where they're yeah. not going to be as strong until they develop their skills and all that shit. So we don't know. The transfer the transfer of information would be DNA, be the and there is no way to transfer the DNA through blood. Yeah. And so that's the... You could transfer and diseases through blood, and and, not. and ones that have scientific explanations for that will say, okay, like that, there's no DNA that's transferred through there. It's literally just their blood going through your body, keeping you alive. So they need more blood, and then eventually they can, they, they can have the shit done to them properly where they can survive on their own, but, like, they need blood. The, the two, she, she wouldn't. There's no proof that she would be resuscitated. She shouldn't have. It was and like a drop it from the blood. And so that that whole scene was just. I felt like it's kind of dumb. Yeah. I'll read the comics more. It's a stretch. It's a stretch to try to explain why yeah. that makes sense. And even if it is in the comics, they could have done a better job of informing that. My rating is now since this is a, a superhero movie. I will count this guy as a superhero. No, you it, dock a point off. I, dock a point yep, automatically off. So, given that, I give it an 8 out of 9. I like it. For Morbius, I will not give it a rating that I would like to give it. I would like to give it a 9 out of 10. 
And the reason why I cannot give it a 9 out of 10 is because I feel like it strayed away from the moral aspect that was supposed to be Morbius. If it was there, it would be a 9, and because it's not, I have to give it a 7.8. For me, I kind of feel like I had a little bit more issues with this film than you and guys science. did. And the science, still pay attention. And it's, the science. I mean, I'm not, I'm, it's not the fact that I'm not, that the, it, the logic doesn't make sense in it. It's just I'm comparing it to all the other superhero films I've seen over the years. And to me, this is not one of, like, the greatest superhero films I've ever seen. I'm saying that this film is not as good as the two Venom films. The two Venom films, granted, they are corny, and when we get to them, we'll, we'll, we'll do whatever we're going to do with them. This film yeah, is yeah, not as good as the two Venom films. As of, that's what I'm saying right now. This is the weakest one out of the three of the Sony-verse that we're building here. So, this film, I'm going to give it a solid 7. Like that is, I feel like, for me, it's... I think it was a solid movie. It's 7. It's a 7 out of 10 for me. Like, it's good. It has elements I didn't like. It felt very... All over the place, but... I somehow came out of it with a idea of what happened. So that it made me cross-eyed in the beginning. So fuck you, movie. What's your, what's your takeaway from the film? Um, what we got problems? Two cripples beat each other up over red bags of blood. Always blue bags. Red bag versus blue bag. The battle between the battle, the inner battle inside of you between like the, it's like an inner battle. That every person has with their subconscious, the dark side, and everything. Yeah. When you're placed in a bad situation, do do you just morality? You just morality. Just just because a road is easy does not mean you should take it. And just just because you're bleeding doesn't mean you should stick your finger in your mouth. And obviously, it sets up for the rest of the thing. It's a setup film. Recommendations? I would say fuck it. Go watch it. A Age of Ultron. Um, I would. <laughs> that movie sucks. I would. I would, I would recommend Watch this it. film. They need more money. Um, I would recommend this film as well. Anyways, all right, closing thoughts. Um, my name was Krieger Margin One. Um, was I mean I yes I, I I will be here all week if you need an autograph or something. My name is Orphan Joker, and uh, I I don't know how long I'll be here. And this is my check ninety five, and I don't know how I am still alive working reviews with these two loonies, and we are signing out. He he'll never leave. I live to die. This